Hi, I'm Ms. Hearn. Let's get started. Conjunction just means things that are joined with the word and or a word that's equivalent to and. So one of the things we're going to need to do is to determine if statements that have been joined with the word and to form a compound statement are actually uh, true or false. So uh, these statements that are joined together are called components, component statements. And so in this example, we're going to identify the component statements in each compound statements and use their truth values to determine the truth value of the conjunction. So for example, Ms. Hearn teaches math and she wears glasses, and it's ironic because I don't have my glasses on at this moment, but I wear glasses. That's true, just to let you know. So, um, Ms. Hearn teaches math and she wears glasses. So, the first component would be Ms. Hearn teaches math, and the second component would be she wears glasses, and they're joined with this connective and, which makes it a conjunction. So if I say Ms. Hearn teaches math, I'm telling the truth. So the truth value of that component statement is true. And if I say she wears glasses, I'm also telling the truth. So the truth value of that component statement is also true. So if I say Ms. Hearn teaches math and she wears glasses, do you think I'm telling the truth or I'm lying? So if this one's true, I'm going to mark that with a T for true, and this one's true. Yeah. If I, if I join two true component statements together with an and, I'm still telling the truth. So Ms. Hearn teaches math and she wears glasses, that's a true statement. Okay, so for part A, we would say that the overall compound statement is true. Let's look at part B. Ms. Hearn teaches math, but she does not wear glasses. So Ms. Hearn teaches math, oops, we already said is true but she does not wear glasses. That would be false because I actually do wear glasses. The word but is actually logically equivalent to and because we're claiming that both things are happening. Even though it has a little bit of a different connotation when we use it in our everyday language, it still logically means the same thing. Very good, Rashad. So yes, this would be a lie to say Ms. Hearn teaches math, but she doesn't wear glasses because an and statement is guaranteeing both parts are happening. So part B, true and false would be would be false. Okay. Now let's look at part C. Ms. Hearn does not teach math. What is the truth value of that component statement? Ms. Hearn does not teach math. That's right, that's false because I do teach math. Okay, but she wears glasses. She wears glasses is true. So we have false but true. So what do you think about part C as an overall compound statement? That's right, it's false. False and true means false. Okay, how about part D? Ms. Hearn does not teach math and she does not wear glasses. So the first component would be what? What am I referring to when I say the first component? the math part that's right miss hearn does not teach math is the first component and the second component is she does not wear glasses so they're both false this time right so if i say to you or someone says to you miss hearn does not teach math and she does not wear glasses are they telling the truth or are they lying liar liar that's right double liar right so just because they said uh two falses does not make it true so um, here what we see at the bottom of the screen is the only four possible patterns that you can have as far as truth values when you have two component statements joined with a connective. You can either have true and true, which was true, true and false, which is false, false and true, which is false, or false and false, which is false. So what is the only time that we got a true? That's right, in part A, when we had true and true, we got a true. All right, so one of the things that we're going to be doing in um, this lesson today is we're going to be summarizing a list of all the possible outcomes for any particular compound statement. And that's called a truth table when we do that. When we list out all the possibilities, it's called a truth table. So a truth table is a diagram which lists all the possible combinations of truth values for the components of a statement. 
and indicates resulting truth value for the overall statement in each situation. What we just did is we summarized all the truth values for the conjunction of the form P and Q. And if you watched the section 3.1 video, you saw that we often use P, Q, R, and S as variables to represent the individual component statements. And we also showed in that video that this upside down V looking symbol, that, that represents the word and, that's the symbol we use for and or any conjunction. So what we just saw is all the possibilities for P and Q. And on the next slide, we're going to look at a truth table that summarizes this. And we're gonna use the rule that we can observe from what we just saw that a conjunction, an and statement, is only true if both parts are true. If even one of them is false, then it's gonna be false. This is a rule that you're gonna to need to memorize. A conjunction is only true if both parts are true. There are gonna be a few rules in this chapter that are necessary to you being successful on the test. If you don't know these few rules, then everything else is gonna be impossible, and this is one of them. So I really need you to, however you're, if you're taking notes or whatever you're doing, making flashcards, this needs to be in there, okay? Highlighted with a big star. This is an example of a truth table. What we see here is at the top in the headings, we see the component statements. P might be Ms. Hearn teaches math. Q might be that um, Ms. Hearn wears glasses. Okay, and each of these we've listed out all the possible truth values, but we've done it in such a way so that each row, row one, row two, row three, and row four, the truth table has a different combination of truth values. So this first row shows where P and Q are both true. The second row shows where P is true, but Q is false. The third row shows where P is false, but Q is true. And the fourth row shows where both of them are false. So they are all distinct scenarios, and it's all possible scenarios. And then we look and we say, okay, what happens with this statement under each of those conditions? And what was this statement representing again? How do we read that out loud, those symbols? We don't say P upside down V Q, right? What do we say? P and Q, very good. So we wanna know if P and Q is true or not. All right, now, what did we say was the rule? A conjunction is only true if both parts are true. I'm gonna number these, one, two, three, for these rows of my truth table. Which row represents the scenario that both components are true? Row one, very good. So what we're saying is that in row one, we should have a true because both components are true in that spot. But that's the only place where we had two trues. So what should be the truth value in all the rest of the rows? False, that's right. Everything else should be false. And we have just completed your first truth table. So let's look at a couple of examples where we'll use our knowledge of this rule uh, the rule for conjunctions that it's only true when both components are true. So when you're working your homework, you might see something like this. So let P represent the statement. Oh, how do we read this out loud, guys? Does anyone remember? Four is greater than one. Very good. Four is greater than one. Is that true or false? That's true. Four is greater than one. Okay, how do we read the second statement? which we're calling Q. 12 is less than nine. Very good, 12 is less than nine. And is that true or false? Good, Axel, that's false, that's right. Find the truth value of, and then how do we read this statement again? P and Q, very good. Find the truth value of P and Q. What I like to do when I'm given the component statements like that, and I'm able to determine if they're true or false, is I start with the statement that I'm being asked to analyze, P and Q, and I replace each of the component symbols, the P and the Q, with their truth value. So in this case, we know that P is true, and we were given that Q is false. 
So now I, I think about this by thinking about the rule for the connective and the conjunction. And it is that an and statement is only what if what? Only true if both are true. Excellent. Do we have both true? No, we don't. So I have to write down that this statement is false. Very good. This is false. Now, of course, they get a lot more complicated than this. This is kind of where we're starting, and the, the statements are going to get more complicated. Okay, now you can also identify this in the truth table that we looked at a minute ago. What we're actually asking you is the same scenario that was in the second row of the truth table, right? When P was true and Q was false, we got a false. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please remember to give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.